My name is Ashton Belasco. And I'm Laura Wartman. We will be presenting on the chaparral biome. Some main topics that we will discuss include climate, wildlife, threats, and conservation efforts. The chaparral biome is typically seen in the state of California, as well as encompassing the northern portion of the Baja California Peninsula in Mexico. The climate seen in the chaparral consists of a wet winter and a dry summer, very similar to a Mediterranean climate. Within the summertime, the climate can be dry enough that the chaparral experiences a drought. This dry weather period can occur through five months of the year and is what puts the biome at high risk for fires. The chaparral also sees about 10 to 17 inches of rainfall each year. Various temperature ranges are seen in the chaparral. The typical winter temperature is 30 degrees Fahrenheit. The summer temperature can be up to 100 degrees Fahrenheit and an average temperature is seen at 64 degrees Fahrenheit. These pictures show the typical appearance of a chaparral biome. As mentioned previously, dry conditions in the chaparral can attribute for an increased risk for fires. These fires are typically a result of lightning striking. Occasionally, the fires can be attributed to human disturbance and carelessness. These fires can be quite dangerous and difficult to control, but they also serve as a source for biome renewal and regrowth. Looking at some of the plants in the biome, many of the plants are highly flammable. These flammable plants will allow for quicker fire spread among the biome. Interestingly enough, those same plants are able to withstand the fires in order to regrow and thrive. Some of the plant characteristics that allow them to withstand fires and regrow include their heavy bark and deep roots. The pictures observed here show the effects of fire burning in the biome. The picture on the left simply shows the fire burning capabilities of the biome, while the picture on the right details the after effects of the fire burning in the biome. The plants in the chaparral are mostly grasses with few trees. Some plants present include blue oak, coyote brush, sagebrush, and olive tree. Since the climate is hot and dry, these plants have small, hard leaves that are often flammable but allow them to retain water. For this reason, plants in the chaparral may resemble those in the desert. Plants often benefit from the fires that can occur and can even depend on it to survive. One example is the cork oak tree which is found in chaparral biomes around the world. It has a hard bark and deep root that helps the tree remain upright and grow quickly in case of fires. The pictures on the slide show some of the plants seen in this biome. From left to right, you see blue oak, coyote brush, and sagebrush. Most animals in the chaparral are nocturnal, with the exception of lizards. The most common animals found in the chaparral biome are the jackal, mule deer, and coyotes. Insects such as ladybugs, praying mantis, and bees are also common as they require little water to survive. Animals in the chaparral can survive well in the heat, but usually migrate during the winter months. Here are some animals that are in the chaparral biome. These pictures include a jackal, a mule deer, and a praying Various threats act upon the chaparral biome and can lead to problems. The main threats seen on the chaparral include human encroachment via land development and pollution. Both land development and pollution disrupt the normal cycle of the biome. Another threat to the biome includes fires. While natural fires are seen as a source of renewal and regrowth in the biome, when humans are playing a part in the biomes, they can lead to catastrophic destruction of key wildlife. Another key threat seen is the fact that there simply are not many laws, if any, that are protecting the chaparral biome. Without laws protecting this biome, the protection and restoration of this biome is very difficult to achieve. There are various conservation efforts that strive to help conserve the chaparral biome. The California Chaparral Institute is a nonprofit research and educational organization dedicated to the preservation of the chaparral biome. They have no financial attachments to any financial institution and run on donations. The goals of the California Chaparral Institute are to preserve the chaparral biome, correct common misunderstandings about the biome, encourage the proper use of fire, and to facilitate enforcement of environmental laws that protect the chaparral biome. 
Another conservation effort includes the Chaparral Lands Conservancy. The mission statement of this organization is to protect shrubland ecosystems as an integral and beautiful feature of California's natural landscape through land preservation and stewardship. This organization was founded in 2009 by David Hogan, an environmental advocate. The five main activities of the Chaparral Lands Conservancy include acquisition of land and management rights, habitat restoration and enhancement, stewardship, research, and education. In regards to acquisition of land and management rights, the organization intends to acquire the rights to manage wildlife, plants, animals, and endangered species in the biome. Looking at habitat restoration and enhancement, the organization will continue implementing projects to help restore biome resources that have been impacted and damaged by land clearing, trash dumping, off-road vehicle activity, and invasion of non-native animals and plants. The stewardship component in this organization involves the long-term process of maintaining biome resources as well as taking part in biome restoration and enhancement. The organization will conduct research on the biome's plants and animals in order to properly maintain, restore, and enhance the biome. Recently, the organization worked with the University of San Diego to determine adequate restoration and enhancements that would benefit the various species in the chaparral. This organization strives to educate the surrounding community on the importance of chaparral maintenance and restoration. They also want to generate public interest and engagement in conservation efforts and projects. This organization collaborated with California Trout and a Backyard Wilderness Program to offer education workshops and hands-on activities. In conclusion, the chaparral biome is a very diverse biome with numerous plants and animals. There are many threats that act upon the biome, but it is us as humans that serve as the biggest threat to the structure and survival of this biome. Many conservancy efforts are currently being implemented in order to make sure that this biome continues to thrive, but laws protecting this biome are still non-existent to none. These are some of the references used for researching this biome. We hope you enjoy learning about the many unique and interesting aspects of the chaparral.